Judging from the past few years, you might think that Moore's Law is dead, right? Think again. Although the yearly improvement in central processing unit performance of approximately 40% is slowing, the combination of CPUs packed with alternative processors is improving at a pace of more than 100% each year. These extraordinary and enormous increases in processing power, paired with data and artificial intelligence, will fundamentally alter how we think about building hardware, developing software, and applying technology to society and corporations. Every industry will be shaken by this upcoming dramatic increase in processing performance. While that may be something you hear all the time, it's definitely true, and I'll explain why and what it all implies. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will provide some statistics that shows we're entering a new age of innovation, in which low-cost computing capabilities will enable an explosion of machine intelligence applications. I will also discuss the emergence of new bottlenecks and what this means for system designs and industry changes in the future decade, and finally, what this means for the far future of society and whether or not this will allow for a singularity-like event to occur like predicted by several scientists. It's something we've heard hundreds of times in the last decade. CNET, MIT Technology Review, and even business groups that marched to the beat of Moore's Law have written about it. However, one of the foremost scientists in the field of processors, colleague Patrick Moorhead, was correct when he stated that Moore's Law, under the strictest meaning of doubling chip density every two years, is no longer occurring. That is correct, he is completely accurate. However, he qualified his remark with, by the strictest definition, for a reason, because he is aware that the semiconductor industry is a master at devising workarounds. Gordon Moore made a forecast in 1965 that would set the tone for our current digital revolution. Moore inferred from thorough study of an emerging pattern that computers would substantially rise in power while decreasing in relative cost at an exponential rate. The discovery, known as Moore's Law, became the electronics industry's golden rule and a springboard for innovation. Gordon, as a co-founder, cleared the way for Intel to create the increasingly faster, smaller, and more inexpensive transistors that power our contemporary gadgets and toys. Even after more than 50 years, the effect and benefits are still seen in a variety of ways. The historical result of Moore's Law is, in fact, accelerating pretty drastically. This graph depicts the evolution of Apple Inc.'s system on chip innovations, beginning with the A9 and ending with the A14 5 nanometer bionic system on a chip. For three processor types, the vertical axis represents operations per second and the horizontal axis represents time. The CPU is measured in terahertz, which is the blue line you can barely see. The GPU is measured in trillions of floating point operations per second, and the NPU is measured in trillions of operations per second. Many people may recall that in the past, we raced out to get the most recent and best personal computer because the newer versions had quicker cycle times, or more gigahertz. Moore's Law predicted that performance will double every 24 months, or around 40% yearly. CPU speed gains have now reduced to around 30% each year, meaning Moore's Law is technically dead. Since 2015, Apple's SoC has improved at a rate that is greater than 118% each year. Actually, it's greater because the real percentage for these three CPU types given above is 118%. In the graph, we haven't even included in the influence of the system's digital signal processors and accelerators, which would drive this much higher. With its 64-bit architecture, numerous cores, and different processor types, Apple's A14 is pretty impressive. But what matters is what you can accomplish with all this computing power in an iPhone. AI continues to advance, from face recognition to voice and natural language processing, rendering movies, assisting the deaf, and someday delivering augmented reality to the palm of your hand. Huang's law is named after NVIDIA Corporation's CEO and co-founder Jensen Huang. It illustrates how the performance of the silicon processors that enable artificial intelligence more than doubles every two years. While the rise may be credited to both hardware and software, its consistent improvement makes it a one-of-a-kind facilitator of everything from self-driving vehicles, trucks, and ships to face, voice, and object recognition in our personal devices. According to Bill Daly, NVIDIA's chief scientist and senior vice president of research, 
performance of NVIDIA's processors grew 317 times between November 2012 and this may for an important class of AI computations. In other words, the performance of these chips more than quadrupled per year on average, a pace of growth that dwarfs Moore's law. NVIDIA's expertise has always been graphics processing units, or GPUs, which work effectively when several independent activities must be completed at the same time. Central processing units, or CPUs, such as those made by Intel, are significantly less efficient but far better at doing a single, serial job very rapidly. You can't break down every computer operation such that it can be handled efficiently by a GPU, but for the ones that can, including many AI applications, you can do it several times faster while using the same amount of power. Intel was a major proponent of Moore's law, but it was far from alone. It took tens of thousands of engineers and billions of dollars in investment from hundreds of firms all around the world to keep it going. Similarly, NVIDIA isn't alone in pushing Huang's law, in fact, its particular form of AI processing may be losing favor in some applications. That is most likely one of the reasons it decided to purchase chip architect Arm Holdings last month for $40 billion, another firm critical to continued improvements in the pace of AI. Massive improvements in processing power and low-cost silicon will power the next generation of artificial intelligence, machine intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. Let's look at an example. We like automotive examples, and watching Tesla is both educational and an excellent model for how the edge can grow. Consider an algorithm that improves a car's performance and safety during a turn. The model is fed data on friction, road conditions, tire angles, tire wear, tire pressure, and other variables. And the model builders continue to test, add data, and iterate the model until it is ready to be released. The knowledge from this model is then sent into an inference engine, which is a chip running software that is installed in a car that receives data from sensors and performs micro changes in real time on steering and braking, among other things. Because there is so much data, Tesla, as previously said, only keeps the data for a very limited amount of time. However, it has the option of selectively storing data in order to transmit it back to the cloud and further train the model. For example, if an animal rushes into the road under icy conditions, Tesla may save that data snapshot, transmit it back to the cloud, integrate it with other data, and update the model to increase safety. This is only one of hundreds of AI inference use cases that will emerge over the next decade. Autonomous cars are another area that Huang's law affects. The goal for Too Simple, a fast-developing autonomous trucking firm located in San Diego, is to create a self-driving system that can fit the power and space constraints of a diesel-powered semi-trailer truck. On a standard Too Simple vehicle, this means cramming the entire system which can only require 5 kilowatts into an air-cooled cabinet in the sleeper cab. TSMC is presently etching transistors at 5 nanometers and is on its way to 3 nanometers. Wang stated that the 5 nanometer node's design ecosystem is now complete, and they have already commenced risk production, that is, the process node and design tools are complete, and it is generating viable wafers. TSMC stated on its most recent earnings conference that it intends to begin commercial production of 3 nanometer chips in the first half of 2022. According to reports, TSMC is working on a 2 nanometers node. However, all of that technology is reliant on the construction of planar chips, and Wang admits that this technique will ultimately stop scaling. According to two-dimensional scaling, we're down to a few hundred atoms and will soon run out of atoms. However, this does not imply the end of density. It was noticed that a number of improvements in semiconductor fabrication maintained density rising even after Denard scaling ceased. The utilization of strained silicon and high-K metal gate technology, in particular, was developed, followed by FinFET, which introduced 3D structures. And today, a method known as design technology co-optimization is being investigated in order to reduce the size of transistors to less than 7 nanometers. All of these developments occurred as a result of the need to create new computer platforms for applications that required faster and more energy-efficient technology. Many computers in the 1970s, the PC in the 1980s, the Internet in the 1990s, and now mobile computing are all part of that progression. Each one pushed for higher density through advancements in semiconductor fabrication. Wang believes that artificial intelligence and 5G will be the next major push. In theory, 
Doubling the stack height of 3D devices every 18 months may accomplish the density enhancement from a real estate standpoint. Of course, this will rapidly become unmanageable for mobile and other embedded devices, and even for data center computers, it will only take 7 or 8 generations to hit a 12-foot ceiling. Huang's law, like Moore's law before it, may eventually run out of steam. According to Steve Roddy, Vice President of Product Marketing at ARM's Machine Learning Department, this may happen within a decade. However, technology has the potential to enable a lot in a very short period of time, from autonomous automobiles to industries and houses that detect and adapt to their surroundings. The rapid advancement of eye-specific technology will enable a variety of utopian and nightmarish applications, ranging from the abolition of vehicle accidents to omnipresent surveillance. However, technology is also enabling a less fanciful use that has significant consequences for how we buy and the destiny of millions of retail jobs right now, cashierless checkout. So, what is your opinion on this potential continuation of Moore's law through a mixture of artificial intelligence and completely new, revolutionary chip designs? Do you believe that Moore's law is a necessity to bring about completely new kinds of software and something resembling artificial general intelligence, or do you think that both can be reached simply through using more optimizations? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.